G'day Cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Your Hubs Four Wheel Driving, we'll be checking out how to wire up your step up converter for your 12 volt oven, in this case a travel buddy. And we'll be looking at three ways to wire it up. Firstly, just using a manual switch and then a semi-automated installation using a couple of automotive relays. And finally, for the creme de la creme, is the low voltage cutout for a fully automated solution. So, let's get into it. Now I've always been a strong believer in learning things from first principles. So what we're going to do first up is learn how the switch works and how an automotive relay works. Now if that's not you and you already know what a double pole, double throw switch is and how it works, by all means go up to the timestamp above and we'll get into the meat of it. But for everyone else, I know everyone's got to start somewhere. No one pops out the womb knowing how a digital multiplexer works and an NPN junction works. So this is for you. So, firstly, the switch. Now this is what's known as a double pole, double throw switch. And that might sound like goobly goop, but what it simply means is it's essentially two gang switches operated by the one toggle. And our connection is either connected from here, which is our common or our input usually, and to either here or to here. So it's either these two or these two are connected. And the same one on this side. So it's either connected to these two or these two. Now we've got our multimeter and I'll set it on continuity. So all that means is when these two probes touch together, we get a buzz after I put it in the right mode. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so I'll connect one to here and the other probe to here. And you'll see at the moment it's not connecting but as soon as I hit the switch to the other side, it's connected. Now, I'll put it back to the off side, but now this side will be connected. And you'll notice none of these are connected at all. So it's basically two independent switches that have worked from the one toggle. So again, if I activate the switch, that's working. And now back to the other side, that's working. And that's all the switch does. So now we understand how this switch works, which is a double pole, double throw switch. Let's get on to the relay. Okay, now let's have a look at an automotive relay. And this is a single pole, double throw. So it's virtually able to do half the switching that the double pole, double throw switch could do. And you'll notice it's got less prongs on the bottom but what it can do is be remotely switched now the reason you usually use relays is they're able to handle a larger current than a switch would and you're able to mount them remotely so the run of wire that's actually carrying the current is shorter now they contain what's called an electromagnet in there and all that means is when you put a positive on one side, let's say on this side, and a negative on this side, an electromagnet operates the switch. So there is a wiring diagram on there which correlates with the numbers that are kind of hard to see next to the pins. So these two here are our coil, so let's say positive on this side, negative on this side, and this is our input, and these are our two switched outputs. So it'll be connected to one all the time, and when you apply power across these two, it'll switch to the other one. So instead of being from here to here, it'll now be from here to here, and it'll disconnect that one. So we'll show you how it works anyway. So I've got a negative, and this is just connected up to a power pack. 12 volt, this is a 12 volt coil in there. You can get various voltages, 240 volt AC. You can get 24 volt DC, so whatever application works for you. The reason I'm using single pole, single throw, Sorry, single pole double throw relays, and this is because they're cheap. And there we go, we just heard it activate, just heard the click there. So we'll connect up one side to our input, and then the other side, we'll connect to our outputs. So at the moment we're connected to there, and we're not connected to there. But if we take this off, and you'll hear the relay deactivate, well now, we're connected to there, and we're not connected to there. So it activates a relay, an electromagnetic relay, so when you apply power to both 
here and here, in this case 12 volts DC, and switches from the input to here, in between here and here. That's it. That's all a relay does. And of course, they'll be rated for current. I think this one's 30 amps, and if your current's higher than that, obviously you can use a higher rated device. But I think 30 amps will be fine for a travel buddy. So now we know how both a relay and a switch works, let's get into and actually how you're going to wire up your switch to operate your travel buddy in your car. And here's our travel buddy switch step up wiring. So we have our battery here with our positive and our negative running up through the fuse. And we have a wire coming down here into our green LED and that's connected to earthy. So as long as we have power here, our green LED is going to be illuminated. Then we come up to our double pole, double throw switch. And at the moment, it's heading up to this pole here. So obviously it's powering our step up converter. And we have a red LED here. So as long as the switch is providing power through this line here, our red LED will illuminate, telling me that the step up converter is operational. And then we have the output from the step up converter coming back through this fuse and then back through to the positive of the travel buddy, providing power from the step up converter to the travel buddy at 15 volts or whatever the step up converter is rated at. Now, if we will switch this one down, we'd then provide the battery voltage to here and it would go and bypass straight through the travel buddy, providing whatever voltage is here down to the travel buddy. And because we're switching out here as well simultaneously, we're disconnecting from here to here, so we're not even providing any connection at all for the step up converter. And that's simply how this works. Now, I couldn't go just giving you a circuit diagram to follow and not actually build the thing myself. So this pile of wiring is the circuit and it's faithful to the wiring diagram that you just saw. Now, all the wiring diagrams for each of the three circuits will be down link so you can download a PDF and print it out and follow it yourself if you so choose. So at the moment, we've got probably about 12 volts coming out of there. Scratch over 12 volts. Now you'll be able to see as per the diagram, we indicated here that this LED is lit. So we've got 12 volts coming out and we've got on this little power meter, we've got 12 0.1 volts and it's drawing down 9 amps from the battery Okay, all is right in this world now when you hit the switch A couple of things will happen So the other LED will indicate that it's on so we got both the green LED indicating this power going in and the red LED indicating that our step-up converter is working and If you follow the circuit around probably not here probably in the printout you'll be able to see that we've now kicked in the step up converter. We're getting nearly 15 volts. We're getting 14.88 volts uh, and 11.4 amps going into the travel buddy, substantially improving the performance. So this, while it's a giant mess, the circuit does actually work. Uh, we've got two fuses in there to protect the outputs and the inputs. Uh, it will work fine. Rightio, okay, on to the next circuit, which is using the relays and the accessory wire from your ignition. And here we have the Travel Buddy Relay Step Up Wiring. Now the difference, of course, is instead of a switch, we have two single pole double throw relays. Now the reason I've used those is because they're common, they're reliable, and they're easy to get a hold of. So just as before, we've got our battery power here coming in here, illuminating this green LED. Difference is, of course, now we have to have a way to switch on the relays and we're providing earth through these and our negative and we're providing our switch to pin 86 on both of the relays here and all that does is switch it on and off and it's basically the same circuit as the other one as before so when it's illuminated and we're providing power to the step up converter the red led illuminates when it doesn't it bypasses a whole lot and goes straight through to the travel buddy and don't forget, if you're doing this at home and wiring up yourself, just follow the numbers on the back of the relays and you can't go wrong. Rightio, onto the low voltage cutout. 
Here we have, ladies and gentlemen, what could only be described realistically as an automotive wiring masterpiece. Any auto electric would be happy to call this their own. <laughs> Now, the reason we're not using a breadboard or anything like that is because at these current levels, well, quite frankly, it'll fry it. So we've still got our two indicating LEDs here. We've got our two automotive relays here. And we've got our two fuses protecting the input and the output. And we've got a switch here, and that's to simulate the power coming from the ignition, like in the wiring diagram. Okay, so it shows no shenanigans going on here. This is our input voltage, and sitting about 12.8 volts or thereabouts. So let's energize the circuit and see what happens. Okay, back to our indicator lights. Our green LEDs illuminated, telling me that whatever's going from the input is going to the output. Our red LED isn't, so our step-up converter is currently not operational. And on our power meter here, so we've got 12 volts going to our travel buddy, at about 9.3 amps or thereabouts going out this way to our travel buddy. That's all fine and well, but let's kick in our switch or turn off our ignition in this case. Now we have both lights illuminated and that tells me that the step up converter is now working and we've got 14.8 volts or thereabouts going to our travel buddy at about 11.3 amps and that will substantially increase the performance of the travel buddy as we've seen previously. Now this is all fine and well and will work fine in a conventional setup but if you have a smart alternator in your car, something like a Ford Ranger or a Pajero Sport or something like that, where the voltage from the alternator is turned on and off to save fuel and emissions and all that sort of wonderful stuff, depending on the load of the electrical system, well, that's also gonna keep varying the performance of your travel buddy as well. Maybe you also have a late model Toyota with a temperature compensating alternator, and it'll do exactly the same thing. Now, the way to get around that, of course, is our low voltage cutout, which we'll have a look at now. And now for the creme de la creme, the travel body low voltage cutout step up wiring diagram. It's essentially the same. It's actually exactly the same as a previous diagram. The difference being is a low voltage cutout here. And you'll see we have to provide it with battery voltage to our input. Now our output is just connected to the relays where the ignition was connected before. And you have to provide it an earth. It turns out you only have to provide it one earth, but provide it two if you feel the need. And other than that, it's exactly the same. Now let's have a look at how the low voltage cutout works in the circuit. Before we actually wire it in, let's have a look at how the low voltage cutout actually works. So pretty simple, we've got our two wires in, we've got our two wires out, that's connected to our multimeter here. We've got a relay here, you'll be able to hear operating. And when it's energized, the relay's on, you'll see that red LED there, that one illuminates. So we can set our voltage there and you can see it's set to 13.5 volts to turn on. And that's our hysteria, so that's the amount in between the on point and the off point. And I've just set it low at 0.1 volts. So what I'll do is I'll turn on my battery charger to simulate the alternator running. And it'll take a few seconds to kick in. You see the voltage rising. When we get to 13.5, 13.6 volts, it's actually gonna turn on. There we go, 13.6 volts, so that's overcharging voltage. We now have the LED illuminated sitting at 13.7 volts and we have voltage coming out as seen on the multimeter here. So we'll turn off our supply again to the battery and we'll run back to normal battery voltage and you'll be able to see it turn off now. So that's all it does, it turns on, turn on, turn off. You can vary the voltage that it turns on and off at and the hysteria, so the turn on to turn off point, that's it. Okay, let's wire it into the circuit now. Okay guys, and now here we have the final iteration, the piste de resistance, as it were. And at the moment, as you can see, we're just running on the supply battery voltage. I'll plug the charger in to bring up the voltage a little bit. And we're getting 12 volts, or whatever the battery is supplying, and 10 amps or thereabouts running to our travel buddy. And I've used that by plugging my charger, as I said. So. Our red LED isn't illuminated and that tells me that the step up converter is not working. So what I'll do is I'll unplug the charger and we'll see what happens. Now our voltage has just dropped below 13 volts. So it's now down to 12.7. Our red LED is illuminated. That means our step up converter has kicked in. And now we're getting 15.8 volts, sorry, 14.8 volts to the travel buddy and 11.3 amps. 
so it actually works. Beauty. <laughs> all right, guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it the old thumbs up. If you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Cobblers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Your Hubs 4-Wheel Driving, we're going to be checking out how to wire up a step-up converter for your 12-volt oven like a travel buddy so you'll get as good on-battery performance as you do get whilst driving. And we're going to look at it in a couple of different variations. Firstly, the switch for your basic install, then a couple of relays to more or less semi-automate it, and finally, we're going to use, uh, what's it called? Ha, 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 ha.